um, are not feeling well. We have a lot of people that are taking the 4th of July weekend, enjoying kind of a holiday. Um, I'm glad you're all here today. I'm here to uh, just a great time of worship, a great time of praise. Uh, some of you will be here for a little bit and then you're taking off again. Kevin is going to go for three years, right? <laughs> yeah, he's going to hop in his RV. I've been, we were, Terry and I were heading up to LaConnor and Kevin comes down and visits with Doug occasionally and has an RV. His two kids bought their homes. And so you don't mind me say, sharing this, do you? It's too late now anyway. So I'm, I'm already halfway into my story. So we're driving down the freeway, going to LaConnor for, for my birthday, and we see these beautiful RVs, and they're pulling F-250 trucks behind them. Does that make sense? And I mean, they're these beautiful RVs, and, and then we saw three or four in a row, and they're all pulling trucks. And I thought, normally you're pulling a boat or a smaller vehicle. And I said, honey, that's what Kevin does. He, he gets in that RV, and I don't, you don't pull a truck, I don't think. A Jeep, okay, well, never mind. So anyway, he's going to be gone three years, and I said, though, he does have to come back and visit. Amen? Amen. Occasionally come back and see us and say hello. All right. So it's great. It's absolutely great. We're all family, and that's the beautiful part of this thing. Um, people can come and go. And, and then, you, you know, I, I kind of like our break, and I like the fact that you're eating while I'm talking. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Uh, you know... Um, I think about formal churches, and I'm so happy we're not one of them. I'm so delighted that we can just be who we are and enjoy each other's company. Amen? Well, we're going to look at today something that all of us need, and that's God's power in our life. God's power activated in our daily life. And that's what we're going to look at today. So if you get your outline and you want to follow along with me, We've already looked at the knowledge of God, what God knows, His all knowledge, all understanding, His presence. But today we kind of want to focus on His power. And when we think about God's power, it's interesting because God created all the heavens and the earth. He's created everything. And I did this little, I saw this little blurb on um, the Science Channel. And they had a deal about the sun and the power of the sun. And so I kind of wrote it down and said... Um, there is more energy in one second that the sun produces than we have used in the history of the world up until right now. And that's from the Science Channel. That's not something that you just make up. And I thought, wow, that is amazing. It produces more energy in one second than we have used in the history of the world. That's power, right? God created that. And here's another interesting fact that says... The sun will be able to burn for another 30 billion years at the current rate of power. Now think about that power and then think for just a minute, God created it. He created the whole thing. So that's kind of power we're looking at today. The power of Almighty God, the creator of all heaven and earth. And he wants to share that power with you and I. And so that's what we're going to kind of look at today. God is almighty. He's powerful. And our scripture for today is Jeremiah 32, 17. Sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. You might want to write that, uh, just underline that. Nothing is too hard for you. We're going through, you know, Terry and I were talking about this all the different things people are going through. Not only in this church, but our friends outside the church. People that we know. Friends of Christie's and Joe's. Friends of Mike's and Sarah's. I mean, just our family. Just friends are going through all kinds of tests and trials. All kinds of different things. And I thought to myself, you know, nothing is too hard for God to solve those problems. Take care of those situations. You know, heal broken heart. All those kind of things. Emotional that we're going to be doing. I'm going to talk a little bit about that as we go. But remember, God is all-powerful. He's not limited to anything at all. Good thing about God, He never gets tired. And so you wake up in the middle of the night and you start praying, guess what? He's listening. Amen. You know, you don't have to wait till 7 o'clock till He checks in. <laughs> you know, is it too early to call? No. He's open 24-7. Listening to our plea, listening to our prayers, listening to our call, listening to our praises. 
He never gets tired. He's never, this is a good thing. You don't have to raise your hands. But do any of you ever get frustrated? No, you don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to even say an amen. Oh. Oh. Whoa, I'm up here and I just got stabbed <laughs> by my wife. <laughs> I'm going home. I'm done. <laughs> I'm sorry I even said anything. Okay, so we do. But good news. God never gets frustrated. Never gets frustrated. That, that's important. And I want to say one other thing. It's easy for God to answer your prayers. Amen. Easy for God to answer your prayers. Luke 18, 27, I don't think I have it in your notes, but it says, all things are possible with God. Yeah. Everything is possible with God. And so he can take care of all of our basic needs. So as we begin our study now, let's look at Romans numeral number one, the evidence of God's power. The evidence. I've talked a little bit about it already. So the natural place to start, number one, is creation. God created everything. Absolutely everything. You know, we just look outside and you see the grass, you see the greenery, you see the trees. You know, you just look around, you see the mountains. Um, one of the most beautiful things is on a clear day you see Mount Rainier, snow-capped, the Olympic mountain range. You, you see all these kind of things. I thought, man, God created absolutely all of this. I thought about a tree. How many of you could make a tree? Roots and all. Just, just a tree. I'm just talking about a tree, not a mountain. God created it. Multiple types. Multiple designs. Fruit trees. Flowers. All of these things. God created it all. So we should be in awe of God 24-7. There shouldn't be a time that we can't go, Wow. God made all of this. He designed every bit of it. In Psalms uh, 19, verse 1 and 2, the heavens are telling the glory of God. The heavens are telling the glory of God. They are a marvelous display of His craftsmanship. Isn't that cool? Can you see that? Or am I in your way? Can you see it? Day and night they keep on telling about God. So every single moment of every single day, as we look at nature, it is a witness to God's creation. Everything. He created the waters, the rivers, the sea, the fish. And incidentally, they're still calling my name Amen. for me to go catch them. Right. And then for me to be gracious and then release them. Amen. He created them all, designed everything. And I thought about this, vegetation, stars, I mean, it's unlimited God's creation. And we can go on and on and on and on. But all that talks about the power of God. The power of God. Created it all. Spoke it into existence. Let there be light. And what happened? There was light. So think about that just for a moment. God's power. So now, number two, we look at Jesus' life displays the power of God. As we look at Jesus Christ, it displays the power of God. So A, Jesus had power over nature, right? Well, number one, he calmed the storms, didn't he? Everything's going on, he walks out, peace be still, boom, still as can be. He walks on the water, right? I'm telling you, we look at this, he spoke to a tree and it withered. Because it wasn't producing the fruit it should have been producing. He just spoke to it and it withered. He turned in water into wine. Turned water into wine. And uh, I think about that when I... I, I, may, I may sing that in about two or three weeks for my mother's birthday. I wrote uh, a song called Water to Wine, uh, what, 40 years ago? 30 years ago? My mom's favorite song. And so on her uh, memorial service, I sang that 18 years ago. I have not sang that song publicly since. But I'm thinking about doing it for her birthday in a couple weeks, uh, so I, I may do that. And I think about water to wine. God can take a natural thing and transform it into something else totally different and yet pleasing to the taste. Pleasing to the taste. And he had power. Jesus had total power over nature. 
The other thing about Jesus says, B, Jesus had power over illness and death. This is very important. Very important. Jesus Christ has power over illness and death. Spiritual death. He can bring us life, right? We're spiritually dead until we're saved and set free, right? So he gives a spiritual life. And so he has that power over illness and death. He healed the blind. He healed the deaf, the sick, the lame, the disease. What's, he rose people from the dead. And he himself rose from the dead. He had power over death. He gives that same power to you and I. That same power over death. There's things in our lives that sometimes maybe need to die. Right? Get rid of them. Put it to death. And so Jesus has victory over that death as well. And see, Jesus had power over the devil. He told a bunch of devils to come out of a person, I mean out of, a, out of, these, out of a man, demon-possessed man. He cast them into pigs, right? And he made devil's ham. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that out. So all I wanted to say that for is so my wife would get frustrated with me. All right. So <laughs> Let's move on. All right. All right. But the amazing thing about God is that um, here's the thing that I want you to know. In all the power that Jesus Christ displayed, all the power of God, God wants to share that same power with you and I. The same power. And you say, that's impossible. I don't think so. Or else God wouldn't have written in his word. He wants to share that same power. Here's the problem is we don't utilize it. Have you ever tried to give somebody advice and they didn't take it? Yes. Right? Yes. You know, and you know it's going to help them, right? You know, you can say something to it and it can transform their life. And they ignore you. Or they just don't take your advice. Well, God says, I'm going to give you all of this power. And I'm going to talk a little bit about it as we're going. All of this power over illness and all these other things. All we have to do is say, I accept it. I'm going to utilize it. This part of my day, that part of my day, I accept it. I want it. I want your power in my life. I need your power in my life. I'm going through this situation, that situation. I need your power. And then walk in that power. All right? You may, here's another thing. You may not experience all the manifestations of what you're asking for. But keep this in mind, you're on God's timetable. That does not prevent you from continuing to ask and to believe for the supernatural. Are you with me? That should not hinder you whatsoever. And you're praying and praying and praying and praying and believing and confessing and all these types of things that I'm going to talk about. And it still hasn't happened. Remember, God's working on His timetable. There might be something in you that He wants to correct. Something in you that he wants to build up. Something in you that he wants to design and shape within you. And it may take a little bit of time to accomplish that goal. Okay? But he still wants to give you that power. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. The riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. And his incomparable great power for us who believe. That power is working like working uh, of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realm. What's amazing about this is that God says this power, this unbelievable power, the working of my mighty strength, my mighty hand, raising Jesus from the dead, it's available to you. Well, how is that going to happen? I don't know how it's going to happen in your life. But it's available to you. I really pray for the supernatural to happen every day in this congregation. Amen. I pray for supernatural things. And it doesn't stop me if I don't hear about it. It doesn't happen. I still pray for it. I still believe God for it. Period. Period. It's very important for us to do that and understand God wants to give us that power and that faith to trust Him for the unbelievable supernatural. Right? I pray for signs, wonders, and miracles for all of us in this church. And I have an expectation that it will happen to many of us as we continue a walk of faith. Amen? Amen. 
Yeah, it has. It's well, you're a walking miracle. Four times. Four times. Yeah. And we have people here that shouldn't even be here. I'm glad you're here, but you shouldn't be here. You should be home in glory, but you're here. Actually, seven times. Seven times. I have two more lives. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, people that walked in here, it's like a miracle. Whoa, you were supposed to pass away three weeks ago. I know. God healed me. He saved me. He transformed me. So we have walking miracles already. So uh, as we look at this, we have this amazing, incredible power that he wants to give to us. But yet, I, I thought about this, and I don't think of any of you, but unfortunately, a lot of people feel like victims. They feel powerless. You know, they're a victim of this. I'm a victim of that. Um, you know, circumstances, society, I'm a victim, blah, blah, blah. And it's like um, I take two steps forward and three steps back. Well, what happens is you have to change your whole way of thinking. I'm not, I, hey, man, I'm not taking any steps back. Yeah. I'm not a victim to anybody. Yeah. I've got power to be whomever God has called me to be, period. No excuses. Period. Amen. Amen. No excuses. March forward. Move forward. Change your way of thinking. Have the mind of Christ. There's no victims. There's no nothing. There's victors. Amen? Amen? So it's important for us to understand that we pray. That's the kind of power that God wants to give each one of us in this room today. That kind of power. Pretty awesome, isn't it? Roman numeral number two. The problem is we often experience a power shortage. This happens. Romans chapter 7 and verse 18 from the Phillips, it says, I often find that I have the will to do good, but not the power. I have the will to want to do something good, but sometimes I simply don't feel like I've got the power to do what I know I should be doing. All right? It's like uh, you kind of feel um, like you don't have the strength. You don't have the energy to keep going. I talk to too many people that have told this to me. I'm just beat to the street, man. I'm exhausted. I'm spent. Well, that means you've had a power shortage. Wouldn't you say that? I mean, when you, I'm not being critical of anybody. I'm just being honest. These things happen to us. We have a power shortage. And so I thought about this, and here's something that happens in a power shortage. Um, it may not or may happen to some of you. Develop bad habits. You can develop, I'm not talking about you're going out sinning, I'm talking about bad habits. All right? You have that power shortage, you don't have the ability or the strength to just keep on going and doing good things. Um, one thing, bad habit, I think is procrastination. So don't laugh. <laughs> you know, we'll put off things, I'm going to do that tomorrow. No, you're not. It's going to be a year and a half later. I'm going to get... I'm, I, I told you about hoarders, right? <laughs> Hoarding a little more won't hurt me at all. I have to buy another trailer to put all this stuff in. I'm going to clean it out someday. That's not a good habit, right? It could be a bad habit. It's also like reading a bad book. Right? Keep reading until it's done. Yeah, even if it's a terrible. It's like a, a bad TV show. Sometimes we get caught... And I'm giving you just kind of simple, goofy things here. We may watch the wrong TV programs, right? Get hooked into the bad stuff. And so that power shortage does not give us the ability to turn them off or put the book down. Terry and I know this. If I'm watching a program and it's, if I hear three swear words, I, I, I delete it. I, I won't listen to it. If there's perversion, I cancel it immediately. I won't watch it. I simply will not watch it. And some people will still press through. But God gives us the power to know right from wrong, good from evil, right? And what we should or should not do. And we don't need a, a power shortage in our life ever. It should never be there. But here's the good news. If you um, want power to change any kind of habits, any bad habits, God says, I give you that power right now. You can do it in the blink of an eye. So that's the good news. He sets us free. Philippians 2.13. For God is at work within you, 
giving you the will. Do you have that in your notes? You guys see that? Where I'm? Yes. Um, uh, if you have a pencil, circle the word will. It gives you the will. And with that, there's going to be power. And the power, you might want to circle power, to achieve his purpose, and I'm going to add this, in your life. Dad, his purpose in your life. He's going to have your will and his will together. I always think this, Lord, I want your will, your way, and your word in my life. Amen. I pray that every morning. Amen. I look up the word of God and I say, Lord, I want to live according to your word, your will, your way, not my way. Amen. It's a daily deal with me. I want to make sure I'm on track with God as I start every single day. And I know you all do the same thing. But it's vitally important. Because here it says, I want to do your will. And then I want the power to accomplish your will in my life. What are we talking about today? God's power in our lives. For anything we may encounter. So God says, I'm going to give you the power not only to get going, but to keep going. I'm going to give you that power. So Roman numeral number three, how to appropriate God's power. We talked about it. You have a pretty good understanding, I hope, of some of it. Not all of it, but at least some of it. So number one, you ask God daily, circle daily in your notes, daily to fill you with his power. Make it be a habit for you, daily. Daily. And it's part of my spiritual armor. I don't know about yours, but when I put on my spiritual armor every single solitary day, I want his power. I want his power operating in my life. So I put that spiritual armor on. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. To the ends of the earth. And I'll tell you something. Some people deal with stress and tensions and frustrations, midlife crisis, getting older, all of these things in life that we have to deal with on a regular basis. And God says, I'll give you power to deal with all of it. Amen. All of it. And I chatted with two or three different people today. Here's a reality. We're going to get older. I, won't, I hate to break that news to you young, young children up in front here. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, you're looking at it as a man, that guy's old. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's going to happen to all of us, right? It's a good thing. And so, it's a good thing. And so God says to you and I, you need power each and every day of your life. Every day is a new adventure, isn't it? Every day is a new day. And we need God's power every single day of our life. And so that's why we need to ask the Holy Spirit's power to be in our life. The fill us to overflowing daily. Number two, you believe in faith. You ask for the power, now I'm going to believe I've got it. If I ask for it, I believe I'm going to receive it, right? And so I've got to ask that, and this, this is the key to, uh, to personal power. It's, it's faith. It is you believe in faith that you have received. And Mark 9, 23 says, If you can, Jesus said, everything is possible for him who believes. Now, it's, what's interesting about this is circle the word everything. Now, just think about that for one minute. Everything means no limitations. You're not limited. Everything is possible with God. There's nothing too difficult for God to tackle on your behalf. Could be your children. Could be a neighbor. Could be a relative. Could be a friend. And you're praying for them. Nothing is impossible with God. No. Nothing. In Matthew 9, 29. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, will it be done to you? Blind see. The blind see. According to your faith. Now, two important questions I want to ask you. Number Two, two things. Number one. What are you expecting God to do in your life? You've got to have an expectation God's going to do something in your life, right? 
something. If you put on your spiritual armor and you shod your feet with the gospel of peace, one of the things you could say is, Lord, who do you want me to touch today? Who do you want me to be kind to today? Who do you want me to forgive today that's an absolute jerk that I have to deal with, unfortunately? What do you want to do in my life today? Where I have to go, what I have to do. Now, what does this force you to do? Be in touch with God. You've got to talk to Him. You've got to ask Him, what, what do you want? And then number two, what are you expecting God to do through your life? You all know that you have a purpose for being here, don't you? Well, what's he wanting to do through your life today? Tomorrow? The next day? It's God's power. It's his power. Right? What do you want me to do? And number three, you speak in faith. You speak in faith. You speak in faith. If you want God's power, you have to speak in faith. 2 Corinthians 4.13 It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoke. Spoken, pardon me. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. And so oftentimes we have to verbalize our faith. Now, what's interesting about this is, and I know we verbalize it in front of other people, and I've shared this with many of you or all of you. Um, people ask how my back is doing. How's your spinal stenosis? How are you feeling today? I said, you know, I feel better. I feel better. And number one, I just thank God the church I belong to prays for me daily. That's why I'm better. And then I also go through all my foods and all my other, all my other things. But the first thing that comes out of this man's mouth is the church I attend, they pray for me. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some look at me and some, boy, that's cool. That's nice. Yeah. That's good, right? But so we have to speak by faith. I believe, therefore I speak. And the other thing I want to share with you and at any time is I say this, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Amen. Man, he's my shepherd. Amen. He is my healer. Yes. He's my provider. He's my strength. Yes. He's my song. He's my alpha and omega. He is every, every single thing. He's my strength. He's all powerful. And here's the cool thing. I'm never, ever, ever alone. That's right. And I speak it in faith. Jesus is with me. The Holy Spirit, God's power is with me all the time. All the time. And there is power in the uh, Proverbs 18.31 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. I make positive confessions with my mouth. Right? And I could go on. I'm not going to get into other things. I've taught on this before the power of the tongue, so I'm not going to deal with that today. I just want to be on a positive note that we can speak positive things and there's great, great power in our tongue. What comes out of our mouth? And I would say this too, verbalize it out loud. Amen. You know, don't, don't whisper it. Say, it. say it out loud. I mean, verbalize it. you got a tongue. You're in your prayer time. Verbalize stuff. <coughs> yeah, just let it go. And number four, and I close with this, act in faith. Act in faith. This is the critical. We act in faith. We have to step out in advance. And when I thought about that, it was like David and Goliath. So David's going to go out and he's chosen by Saul. He gets all this armor, gets all ready, and he's called to go fight Goliath. Takes all the armor off, kind of looks around. Nothing fits right. i, I, I got to get a different tailor. I don't like this. I don't like that. <laughs> So he gets his little slingshot and he goes over and he picks up what's fascinating is five small stones. Faith. Five small stones. What's interesting is he gets this little slingshot and puts one stone in it. And he's the one that steps toward Goliath, not Goliath toward him. He's the one that steps out in faith toward Goliath. He engages first. One shot, gone. But what you have to understand is that David did what? Stepped out in faith. 
He stepped out. He acted. He didn't say, you know what, I, I got a slingshot. I don't know if it'll work. <laughs> Maybe I'll need a bigger stone. Maybe I'll just run. <laughs> right? But what did he do? Acted in faith, stepped forward, met the challenge, and won the battle. And that's what God wants to do with each one of us in this room today. Receive God's power in your life. Live it, breathe it, love it. Amen? Amen. Father, thank you for this.